Hey everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are in the VAB today, tinkering around with some of our launch systems as I kind of feel that the uh, RA9 in its current iteration is reaching the end of its service life. Uh, it's a great reliable rocket, but it's time for something with just a little bit more lift capacity. So I was hoping to kind of experiment around with some newer ideas today and see what we might be able to come up with. The core idea is being to uh, improve simplicity and affordability. So I'm trying this uh, F1 stack. Theorizing that a single F1 might be able to deliver a similar capacity to a low Earth orbit. So the engine fired up, it just kind of labors off the pad. It's not really as uh, quick as I would really like it to be. And with the goal being to put as much of that uh, HV upper stage into low Earth orbit as possible, a uh, single stage F1 to orbit was probably a little too hopeful. And with the cost of the F1 engine being what it is, this uh, single engine actually costs just about as much as the entire RA9 fully assembled. And aside from pegging out at a G-load that is pretty much unbearable, it really only gets the stage up to about almost 5 kilometers per second here payload deployment which means this entire HV stage would be spent getting this thing the rest of the way to orbit. So while it meets our demands for reliability and simplicity, because the F1 engines aren't recognized by test flight, it's just not quite powerful enough, and I think it has a lot to do with uh, performance at uh, launch and low atmosphere. So I'm thinking maybe we can just uh, add some Minutemen boosters to this, and we'll see how much of a performance gain that nets us. Uh, just drop them a little lower here and get the clamps back on and we're ready to take it outside for another test flight. Even the mighty Minuteman boosters aren't quite enough to get this thing accelerating like I would like. And with the added cost, the whole system is now more expensive than the RA9, but uh, not by much of a fact. The issue here is that I probably misplaced these boosters and they don't jettison when staged, causing some, well, we'll call them instability issues with the added weight that the gimbal just can't make up for. Yeah. We're scrapping this design. But before I headed back to the VAB, I just kind of needed to check and make sure uh, that the boosters did in fact not separate. Yeah, they're not listed here as separating at all. Uh, I probably attached them to the side of the rocket instead of those clamps themselves, which explains at least that part of the failure, but I'm just not happy with this. And who am I kidding? This is RSS. Any single stage to orbit rocket is purely a dream. So we're going to try out something a little more traditional, in the Soviet sense of the word, anyway. So we'll just get some of our larger tanks here formed out. The real qualm here is that the F1s and the E1s are probably the best engines I have available to me as far as uh, ISP and sea level thrust, but they are really expensive. The Soviet uh, RD-275Ms are dirt cheap and almost as good. But UDMH and N2O are really dense and really heavy. So while they might be pretty efficient, uh, getting enough fuel to get them to orbit and off the pad is a bit of a challenge. So the RA-9 uses a RD-275M as its core stage and then four E1s as the boosters. And I just kind of wanted to try and see what four uh, RD-275Ms would do with the assistance of those little uh, lateral boosters on the side of the core stage. I'm sorry, radial, not lateral. But just like the 275Ms, they all burn uh, UDMH and N2O, so I don't have to worry about balancing two separate fuel types, just their different burn rates and mixtures. The price tag, just a couple grand less than the RA9. Let's get it outside and get it off the pad. Initial performance is about the same as a single F1. It doesn't really get up and going as fast as I would like. Now I've got the added bonus of monitoring fuel consumption to see if we've got anything left over. But uh, even after booster sep, the TWR on this stage is, well, less than good. And thus necessitates uh, an exceedingly high angle of attack, resulting in some fairly ridiculous gravity losses. I may have overdone it just a bit with this flight, resulting in a pretty high apogee, but even so, its performance versus the RA-9 is comparable, but certainly not better. Even if I had had a much more optimized flight trajectory, these numbers still just don't work for me. So it's time to jump back to the VAB and make some more revisions. So instead of just trying to deal with this exceedingly heavy rocket, I'm just going to go back to where we started from, which was the uh, Mars-1 project RA-9 that I've been working with this whole time as the upper stage 
and try to just redo it from the bottom up instead of the top down. So I think that by extending the core stage a little bit with the addition of those uh, radial engines and keeping more or less the same profile but changing out these E1s to maybe the 275, that maybe I can just squeeze that extra little bit of performance out of this that I need to keep it relevant without having to actually redo the whole thing like I've been trying to do so far. So some quick engine adjustments and some fuel replacement will be on our way. Yeah, just as soon as I figure out how these engines actually attach. There we go. So now we can swap the kerosene and locks for UDMH and N2O. Nice storable, ultra-dense, really heavy propellants. But as such, we're still only at like 1.1 thrust to weight ratio off the launch pad, which not nearly what I'm looking for. And thinking this would have the same problem as the last launch, I maybe shot a little too high and ended up with a really high uh, apogee. But again, even with a optimized flight trajectory, I don't feel like this is doing uh, anything better than what the RA-9 currently does. And it looks as though we're still using more than, well, may at least half of this uh, HV upper state to circularize and clean up our orbit, where I'd like to have about 85% of it left for interplanetary transfers. So, sorry this was pretty unproductive, but I did learn some things. But uh, that's going to do it for us today, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. I do appreciate it, even though we didn't actually accomplish anything today. It's still nice knowing y'all are out there. So, uh, I guess I will see all of you tomorrow. Until then, thanks for hanging out. I'll see you later.